The following program is classified G. It's suitable for all ages. We would like to remind our viewers that the views expressed in this program by our participating guests are solely viewpoints of them who take part and does not reflect the views and beliefs of the Verena Media Network. Welcome to Gen XYZ, where weekly we bring to you a topic that the youth are engaged in and break it down with someone who's within that field. And uh, we have an individual who's pretty famous <laughs> around the youth circles when it comes to activism. And that is specifically the topic we are going to talk about today as well, how the youth involvement in environmental activism, in protecting and conserving the environment has adopted, has evolved over the years and where it is right now. And we'll really like break down where we can go from this point onwards. Really give some, uh, talk about the crux of this program itself, Gen XYZ. So the guest today is Mudita Katuavala, the coordinator of Pearl Protectors. Great to see you again, Mudita. Thank You're not new to this program and thank you for joining us once again. Thank you. Uh, Mudita, before we get into all of this, I know for a fact if someone goes to the website at Pearl Protectors also, uh, a lot of details and a lot of uh, it's an active process and one of the key things that we'll talk about this when we go into our program as well is that funding is an issue there, is, there are problems on a daily basis when it comes to things like volunteer work how has it been how are you coping with COVID-19 and let's go into our discussion afterwards thank you Danido um, so yes the Pearl Protectors is a, is a youth-led volunteer organization that is dedicated towards protecting the marine environment of Sri Lanka. So, I mean, we started in 2018 and since we have grown uh, exponentially, we right now have about 900 registered volunteers. These are all volunteers who are passionate uh, towards protecting the ocean. So the Pearl Protectors, what we have done uh, throughout the past years is to see how the youth in Sri Lanka uh, can really dedicate their time, effort towards uh, various ways of protecting uh, the marine environment of Sri Lanka. So like you said, like we, we've tried to make it more interactive. Uh, we've tried to involve a lot of youth coming in. We've tried to give a lot more opportunities in, uh, in various fields. Uh, so that the, 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 the youth or the, the volunteers can learn a lot of experience, uh, get a lot of experience, learn new things, uh, meet other people, network, and have a good time. Uh, and so we have been successful in doing that. Uh, we've had challenges, like you said, uh, but um, as long as you have a focus, as long as you have a goal, um, all challenges can be um, overcome. So uh, the Pearl Protectors has uh, thrived in that sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think something very important you portrayed to us while we were discussing outside as well is this concept of passion and how important that is when it comes to this, when it comes to things like entrepreneurship, things that are driven by the youth as of today. So I want to get your take on it. I want to get your take on challenges and everything else. But to add some sort of content part to this discussion, let's start somewhere here. Let's, I want to ask you today from where you see this, mm. where do you think the youth should get involved? Where do you think that help should come from? Are, are we getting, are we the fo is the focus at the right place? What are your thoughts on that? Of course, I think Sri Lanka has uh, uh, one fourth of uh, the population is youth. And so uh, the, the younger generation in Sri Lanka is, is, uh, is unique and it's different. And so um, they understand, a lot of our youth understand there is a future for them. And so that future needs to be clear for them. Their, their future needs to be a place where there is, uh, it's, it's not scary for them. So for that, there's a lot of uh, youth involvement uh, through coming in through passion, coming through in through dedication, exactly. uh, really coming into uh, you know uh, in different aspects. For example, the pearl protectors we focus mainly on the marine environment uh, conservation, but there are other uh, youth organizations who are diversified in their own ways. Uh, it could be environmental, it could be social, it could be economical, it could be uh, sports. Uh, it, it, it's uh, it's a variety. Um, the point is, I think, uh, the youth involvement, the best way 
uh, is through volunteerism, and that's uh, that's what we believe in. Uh, Sri Lanka, according to the uh, um, uh, World Giving Index, <laughs> is ranked number one in the world. This is not something uh, a lot of people know. They are, we are ranked number one in the world when it comes to volunteerism. Uh, more than 40% of our population are volunteers. And you might ask, like, is, it, is that actually true? Uh, it is because it is engraved in, in our like, you know, culture, in our blood. Like we, whenever we see something that happens, or whenever, uh, whenever something bad happens, we, we have that urgency to react. Uh, to, f to try find solutions. Um, so even on the road, right, if, uh, if an accident happened, you would see uh, the, the crowd just coming in people to help in, yeah. people. This is part of volunteerism. This is the definition of volunteerism is you, you contribute, uh, you dedicate your effort, your time without expecting anything in return. And I think this is, this is a core area in Sri Lanka right now that we really need to focus on. Uh, a lot of young people, uh, you know, right now with COVID challenges, there are challenges with education, there's a lot of challenges with meeting people. Um, so this is the perfect time also to see what an individual can do themselves uh, through volunteerism, through social uh, uh, awareness, and uh, through impacting positively to the, uh, to the, to the, to the society. Volunteerism is also a platform to really learn, get experience. Uh, um, you know, like I said, meet new people, mm -hmm. and this is the best way to do it. Mm -hmm. And the other main important thing is it it teaches you to um, not to expect, you know, anything in return uh, when you provide any effort or if you're dedicated on doing something, you don't expect anything and. In Sri Lanka and all over the world, this this has been a thing where everybody does something to gain something. Gain something, yeah. And people might even hold that same standard against you now. Something I want to ask you. Secondly, was on how we can expand this support now. Since you mentioned that there's clearly an interest within the Sri Lankan population as well as culturally, we are integrated. You know, help people to give and to not expect something in return. Was it something I just want to touch on at this standpoint? Like, let's just uh, address the elephant in the room before you mention it. The MV Express per mm -hmm. disaster, something that that was within your ambit where you all were operating and it was not that the ocean didn't have problems before that and you all were working on that and then this happened and it was a very emotional moment for most Sri Lankans who were not even who may have had a backseat when it comes to environmental issues but people took it forward but the way you held to a different standard said okay look pearl protectors are there what is the pearl protectors doing about this what can the pearl protectors do is that a standard that the youth have to face when moving into this. I'm, I'm, I'm not saying it's a bad thing per se. It has a good element to it. But is that something you have to face? And if so, how did you face it? That's a, that's a good question. I mean, the MV Express Pearl w is a disaster. And it, it's still ongoing. Yes. Uh, we saw, this is not the first. We saw last year, uh, empty New Diamond almost spilled so much oil, 300,000 okay. uh, 300, metric tons of oil. Even then we were, through the pearl protectors, we were trying to see how we can mobilize these volunteers if in case oil, sp uh, if in case an oil spill happened. In 2018, we saw in Uswetika year, oil spill happened because of a rupture in a, a oil uh, a pipeline. And we, our volunteers were there, really helping out, uh, helping out with the efforts uh, in mitigating the risk. So. We had that experience and when this happened, uh, because we are so dedicated towards protecting the ocean, and like you said, we were, we were focused in various other areas. We were uh, focused on protecting our mangroves. We were focused, in, focused on really creating a habitual change in the society towards uh, re, uh, 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 you know, moving away from single-use plastic, because that is uh, a core uh, sure. pollutant that is you know, affecting uh, the ocean. Apart from that, unethical fishing practices. Mm -hmm. uh, we are seeing uh, maritime services which are expanding uh, uh, on a daily rate. So these were areas we were focused in, and then suddenly this happened. And so um, even when this happened, we were celebrating World Oceans Day. Exactly. Uh, so we we had uh, you know we were d uh, doing uh, one of the largest summits at that time, and uh, every day 
it was like you said it was very emotional um, the fire led to the uh, the blast and then after that there were debris uh, washing a show there was uh, chemicals untold chemicals then there was uh, the plastic pellets there's there was fumes we were like what can we do mm -hmm. and a lot of people are like how can we help you mm -hmm. right so um, Definitely, there was a huge concern. This was the first time in South Asian, in a South Asian region, we saw so much of pellets, mm. nurdles being spilled into the sea. And you know, every time if you've been to the beach, it's like snow, right? So now it's uh, it's uh, it shouldn't be that. Way. It shouldn't be that way. We we are we are known to have beautiful beaches. Right, we, our fisheries industry, it's affected and we don't know for how long. Uh, so this ship brought in a lot of challenges and so we took it step by step. Uh, from our organization, from our volunteers, what we did was first initially we focused on where was help needed the most. The authorities, at that time there was a lockdown, the authorities needed help, uh, they needed manpower, so we were helping with that uh, aspect initially. We were trying to help with the awareness, um, trying to make people understand what is going on. People are at home, not knowing what is going on. The media, international media, the local media was talking on a daily basis, the, the untold impact that is happening. So we tried to break it down and simplify everything that is going on. And then now we uh, we are mobilizing volunteers to really deal with the nurdles, the plastic pellets, which is yeah. which is even a, another big problem. Exactly, uh, a big initiative that Pearl Protectors have undertaken. I want to give you some time to really like get into details, maybe towards the end of our program. Something you touched on, education awareness. The segue I want to take into our next segment, Mudita, we'll take a very short break. We are in discussion with Mudita Katwavala, uh, the coordinator of um, uh, Pearl Protectors. Stay with us on JNXYZ. Jen XYZ, we are in conversation with Mudita Katuavala, the coordinator of Pearl Protectors. Uh, Mudita, you gave an excellent segue into what I wanted to ask next about awareness, about education. Now, volunteerism, as you mentioned, it is not only a macro project, it's, some, it's a micro issue also. You can do this at home. Mm -hmm. You can do it when you're you know, alone. You can do it when you visit the beach. And uh, that is where the change should happen. And I believe even when we had our conversations last time, you advocated for that change on that level, that singular level. And the most important aspect according to what I have observed is going to be education. Because people need to know what they can do mm. in when, when, when if they are not in a, maybe basically if they are not part of Pearl Protectors, they need to know what they can be doing. Yeah. How have you addressed this? How has the youth addressed this? Are the youth aware of what to do, with, which is a question that many people would have. Now, definitely, I think education is uh, a priority. When it comes to this, the awareness, people need to know uh, uh, what it is as it is. Uh, so uh, we, from our organization, we've been doing, we've been uh, having the awareness uh, side of this. We, when we, when the COVID uh, situation uh, before it, we were going to schools and we were trying to get the the, the students to be aware of the problems that our oceans are facing. Uh, even uh, during the COVID, we uh, have done a lot of awareness sessions online. Uh, trying to, these are not just a session where we just do it and end it. We, we make sure that there's a follow-up. We make sure that there's impact. Uh, we hear so many good stories. When you do it properly, a lot of these students uh, take that message out. They, they carry that message out to other, um, other students and the, the society. That becomes the inspiration. Um, for example, uh, we had a story when we went to a school and we, we made sure that uh, you know, the students are aware of as to why to reduce single-use plastic. And we, just didn't, we, just, we didn't just tell uh, to stop it. We gave them reasons. A month later, we get so many calls saying, my ch child came back home and our whole, whole family is now uh, single-use plastic free. So they, that child has been able to convince their parents and their family 
to why, why it's important to reduce single-use plastic. And so this is just one story. And it's important that, uh, that education uh, has to be done in a way that, that is, there has to be proper follow-up. There has mm -hmm. to be, uh, the, uh, you need to make sure that that student or whoever um, listens to us uh, knows how to follow up on these things and they follow through uh, with their initiatives. Uh, the other thing is now, you spoke about volunteerism. It is also uh, a platform for education itself. Now, when you say uh, uh, volunteerism, for a lot of people, it means like, okay, just going to the beach and just cleaning the beach. Not at all. We have mobilized volunteers on doing research. We have mobilized uh, volunteers on the expert levels. So if, if, a, if a person is skilled and all wants to be skilled in a certain area, maybe photography, maybe uh, um, uh, article writing, mm -hmm. uh, we have given that opportunity. We have given that resource. We have uh, mobilized experts who can provide that um, guidance to that person who then can practically do something and that could really spark that uh, inspiration within themselves. And we have seen so many volunteers excelling themselves in a short span of period through that you know, education that is given practically. Mm -hmm. Right. So um, last year we, we did a series of research. Uh, students from Ocean University, students from um, other districts, they all came together. Uh, they identified what are the uh, areas that is uh, uh, most as most at risk in at Sri Lanka. Lanka. Right. Understand those areas and trying to find solutions. And when you try to find solutions, as you know, people tend to give their own opinion sometimes. But this, the way we approached it is, we did a re research, we did case studies, we built on the, the, we had a solid base. And that really helped us in uh, finding really good solutions when it comes to ocean conservation. And this is, like you said, this is not just for ocean conservation. This can be anything anyone really is passionate about. If you really put your time, and if you really put your effort, you can start your, uh, grassroot uh, initiatives. It doesn't have to be an organization. You just you can start it on your own. You can get your friends, inspire them, motivate them, bring them together. We had this concept of Shramadana in Sri Lanka. Everybody knows it. Maybe uh, this was prevalent like probably 40, 30 years ago. Maybe even till uh, recently, but it's not as prominent as it should be. Uh, we know Dansal during like you know. Uh, Fesakt and poet times, we had these things. These are all uh, ways of volunteering. Mm -hmm. And so when you, when you do these activities, there is a self-satisfaction that is beyond anything else. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people have really lost um, really understanding the satisfaction. They have other satisfactions which are temporary. But this sort of satisfaction, um, is permanent and that could lead to so many other things so for like you know if you are interested in something it doesn't have to be marine conservation it could be anything you can uh, you can be that inspiration you can really start your own thing uh, have but before when you start something you need to have a plan you need to have the passion you need to have a plan and that's i think something from our platform the pearl protectors we provide it we provide that understanding for anybody who is willing to really focus their passion towards the marine conservation side we uh, we provide that resource that um, helping hand uh, for them to really start their own thing. And so um, we've, we've seen that flourish. And so we are getting so many good stories from everywhere else in Sri Lanka saying, uh, thank you for doing this. You know, we are doing this uh, in Batiklo, we are doing this in, uh, you know, Gaul. And so now there are so many, uh, um, you know, small organizations coming up. And I think the next step for once you have this thing going, you need to be uh, genuine mm -hmm. about the work you do. I think that is also something uh, in the current society we've we've lost, mm -hmm. right? So um, we, a lot of individuals or maybe um, organizations might have their own agendas. But the thing is, when you have agendas, when you have other, um, you know, if if the focus is not on something specific, you will lose track. So you have to be. Uh, passionate about what you're doing, be able to really understand on a practical sense mm -hmm. on, 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 on what needs to be done. 
you can learn from uh, other organizations but you have to see how it can be uniquely done in Sri Lanka exactly. right so um, how you can like bring in uh, 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 you know other people and then there are so many countless challenges mm -hmm. uh, the important thing is when you face a challenge you will feel like demotivated but you need to have a backup uh, mm -hmm. uh, option on how you can really motivate yourself and that is only through passion mm -hmm. you know understanding that genuine passion towards uh, achieving some goal is the real motivator to keep on going mm -hmm. um, you shouldn't lose sight of one would say the ultimate goal that you have had and that is an important message that um, I think uh, you really structured it well there I want to get your take on this but now since we are in the subject of education let's just touch this as well now I'm pretty sure this critique and everything you hear on a daily basis so I'm going to push those questions back again on you and get some answers because the youth that watch this program or the youth anyone that watches this program was want to get an idea of look what is the youth actually doing mm -hmm. and you know whether that change is actually sustainable whether it's important um, people might argue okay the youth are detached because of their geographical location maybe say one person in Colombo may not understand the issues in Baticlo somewhere else or in the southern part of the country I'm pretty sure you face this critic and maybe you even face this issue at one point also and that also I think trickles down to education or how how you can relate to the experiences of people that are living in other parts of the country how have you addressed this with maybe on a personal level because now disasters may happen anywhere and since you have taken up a very difficult role of marine protection which is all around the country uh, the experiences the belief systems are different to those places mm -hmm. when you had to face those experiences how did you address them no of course like uh, now for example uh, last year empty new diamond right so this happened in the east coast east coast yeah and so if there was an oil spill from that uh, we, we are talking about one of the worst oil spills that could have ever happened in the world right so uh, for the foreseeable future the fisheries the tourism in the eastern coast would have like just um, vanished basically so at that point there was a urgency uh, a crucial urgency you know to mobilize volunteers try to see how we can really at least save the coast guard you know so the main challenge we found was like okay um, how we are living <laughs> we're staying in a covid era like we can't travel as at, at ease and it's 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 difficult to travel you know especially volunteerism we, we volunteers we don't have our own uh, resources as such we have to find funding for uh, like you know providing resources for volunteers so um we what we did was we 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 tried to reach out to a lot of organizations grassroots organizations um Which are in those areas in those areas yeah. right try to really relate um try to give them that um awareness that is needed mm -hmm. right you know um, giving that guidance the step-by-step -step process of how to do these things that way at least during an urgent period uh, at the initial stage at least they can like you know uh, be able to counter with whatever the disaster that could potentially have happened um, thankfully it didn't happen but uh, there is a definite uh, risk in it and we are also trying to see how we can really uh, expand out and really um, at least provide that base mm. in those areas now in Mana it's a different case right if you go to Jaffna it's a different case Trincomalee it's different mm -hmm. um, we are we are seeing so many threats to our marine Second. environment we are seeing like you know bottom trawlers coming in uh, really um, uh, scraping our seabeds we are seeing dynamite fishing we are seeing now our corals bleached 96 more than 96 percent of our corals have bleached unethical unreg unregulated fishing practices corals being broken we are seeing uh, plastic pollution everywhere like we are we are getting reports from chilla we are getting uh, reports from batiklo we are getting from matra um, just uh, you know un, um, unimaginable amounts of pollution so I think the best solution there is to really understand your geography, understand what are the main threats that you're facing. And I'm just giving an example just on the marine conservation area. But this is this is uh, this is something well. for everything. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, so once you understand uh, what are the main challenges, take it one by one. Mm -hmm. take, don't if you try to do everything at the same time, you're just going to burn out. You're okay. going to that passion, that spark is not going to be there anymore so take it one by one when you achieve one goal 
you'll have that satisfaction, you'll have that motivation to really take up the second one with more vigor, you'll have more experience, you know exactly what to do. Mm -hmm. So I think that's important. Um, second thing is don't try to be the only one. I think you need to be able to really relate mm -hmm. whatever you uh, mm -hmm. uh, learn, your experience to someone else who can take some other challenge up, right? So <coughs> I think um, in Sri Lanka, uh, there is uh, this thing of working in silos, uh, which is um, quite unfortunate. I, I mean, I understand why it is being done in such a way, but um, now with our Nurl Sri Lanka campaign also, we've invited across the board all volunteer organizations to come on board mm -hmm. so this way they are learning they have that incentive to really be participating and that satisfaction is much more mm -hmm. than if you try to do it on your own and like you know you're just going to burn out so um, I think these are a few uh, helpful tips yeah, I want exactly. to share I think that's a very important message that you, you I really want to get your take further on because that will talk about the larger youth movement within the country and that maybe goes beyond conservation and things like that. I want to get your take on that, Munta. We'll take a very short break. We are in conversation with Mudla Katwavala, the coordinator of Pearl Protectors. Stay with us on Gen XYZ. Back to Jen X Y Z. We are in conversation with Mudida Katwavala, the coordinator of Pearl Protectors. Mudida, uh, I think two very good segments that we just passed on, you know, engagement and on and on education. Next, I want to get your take on the skepticism that is present within society about youth movements. Now, uh, that is on on one side there there are legitimate arguments. One would say since you have also portrayed some of this, where some organisations would be self-serving, some organisations lose sight of you know what what target they're going for. This recognition aspect comes up, then people start mushrooming with organisations, then they lose sight of as you mentioned the passion and what what they should be going after. To leave it very general, with mm -hmm. In your experience, how successful have you seen youth-driven initiatives? Like, if, if that question is posed to you, if that challenge is posed to you, how will you respond to that? Um, uh, well, it's a, it's a good question. It's a, it's a tough question to answer as well, because when you say youth organizations, it could, it could mean a lot. Uh, we could be talking about volunteer organizations. It could be non-governmental organizations. It could be a CSR initiative, uh, which is also sort of uh, aligned with the uh, youth movement. Uh, it could be conservation organizations. So um, I think the biggest and the important thing I think youth uh, organizations need, really need to focus is on not lo losing the focus, mm -hmm. uh, identifying what what they have to really do and uh, organize themselves better, right? So once you have a strategy, once you have a focus, that could lead to uh, incredible things, right? So uh, the other thing is also um, avoid, I think it's important that uh, individuals really need to avoid, you know, self-benefiting uh, through being in organizations. And that's something the Pearl Protectors has been really uh, emphasizing through volunteerism, the, contrib uh, the contribution, the collective contribution towards finding solutions or dealing with issues is is also we believe is very sustainable and it's very impactful and I think these uh, few things uh, if every organization can genuinely mm -hmm. really genuinely understand what they really need to do and the other thing is um, avoid uh, being involved with you know un unnecessary uh, initiatives you know so uh, when you when you really do something there could be a lot of uh, you know uh, eyes on you and so that could lead uh, like I said the focus going away from what you really need to do so you need to be able to understand collectively uh, as a team if you uh, if that organization or if that you know initiative can really understand what needs to be done and what shouldn't Mm -hmm. That really helps in finding good solutions. Um, 
I mean, I'm just relating a uh, few experiences from the Pearl Protectors. Exactly. Uh, throughout the last three years, we like just last year we did 50 projects like during COVID, and so they they all have been impactful. So we measure our projects based on the impact. It could be just a very small project, right? But the but the end result has to be that that impact you wanted needs to be coming out and we are seeing a lot of uh, initiatives also that are happening in Sri Lanka they are just doing it for the sake of doing it and there's no real follow up and and i think that there has to be a, a, a stop to those things and you ne really need to if you start something you need to see to the end and make sure there's good impact positive impact and the the society is benefited as collectively from that initiative you have done. Um, so I think uh, that also like the project we are doing right now is uh, is on the same level. And so and the Nerdle Sri Lanka campaign, uh, which we just launched beginning of this uh, month. Yeah, if you could give us some details on that campaign yeah. as well, because mm, people might want to, you know, if they can, if, the pro if this program also contributes to someone volunteering, that would be helpful as well. Of course. Yeah. No, I think uh, it's important that, you know, th these these opportunities. Now, the Nerdle Sri Lanka campaign is a first of a kind in, in Sri Lanka. What exactly is the objective? Uh, uh, so, uh, we saw this ship and uh, we saw like uh, around 40 containers full of pellets just spilling out to the sea. And so they are now gushing up on our shores. And it, it's been recorded uh, from Mana to even Arugambe. And we are seeing reports coming from Kerala and it's going to be spreading around. But the epicenter is in Sri Lanka. And so if you've been to the beach recently, you would see how much pollution, how much, it's like snow at certain places. And so what we want to do is we want to remove these nurdles from the, uh, the coastline. There's an urgency because these nurdles are the building block for uh, a lot of other single-use plastic items. Uh, they are in pellets. They're very small. They're uh, close to the size of sand itself. So what could happen is with time, uh, these pellets could absorb a lot of toxins that are in the sea and they could discolor uh, with time. When it reaches that point, it could affect our marine environment, marine habitat, because the fish and the marine animals would mistake them to be food, and they right. would be consuming them. It, could, it, it is pot potentially hazardous uh, for us if we are to consume these nurdles or toxic con consumed uh, nurdles. Uh, further on, like our beautiful beaches, they are, they are all now spoiled because of these nurdles, and these are plastic. Uh, before, we, when we do beach cleanups, we are picking up bottles, plastic bags, sachets, uh, wrappings. But now we are talking about the building block, literally picking up that building block. So it's very difficult. Uh, once it's mixed with the sand, you can't really go and pick it by hand. Mm -hmm. You need to have uh, sieving tools. So that this is, this is something uh, we've found solutions homegrown solutions. We've come up with our own designs on how to really sieve these nurdles out. In addressing that, Mudita, one would argue, is this task a little too difficult for the youth to address? How, how I think you were answering that question as well, because that is something that would be common. Look, the target is too far ahead. Can, can it be achieved based on like your experiences? It's ambitious. Mm -hmm. It is definitely ambitious. But the thing is, that urgency, knowing that this, if we leave it out there, it's going to have a far more detrimental impact on the marine environment, really uh, sparks us up. So that is really the motivation for us to go to that extent of taking that challenge up and really finding solutions. And so um, this is a three month campaign mm -hmm. and this is not just a one off thing. And even after three months, we want to make sure that we continue with the service, we continue with the research. And since this is the first time such incident has happened in Sri Lanka, a lot of, uh, it's important that we need to know what happens afterwards as well. What we know is from other countries like Hong Kong, like you know Ireland, UK, Australia, New Zealand, when these things happen, it has a long lasting impact on our coastline. And if 
nothing is done, it's going to have a far detrimental impact. So we have found solutions. We are, we are trying to manufacture them and place them along the beaches so that anybody can come volunteer, use these tools. At the same time, we are trying to uh, emphasize on the serving and the research part, mm -hmm. and then mobilizing volunteers. We are, we are in difficult times, but at the same time, we are uh, making sure that all COVID guidelines are uh, uh, adhered to and making sure that the volunteers clean a large stretch of beach uh, so that we can remove at least most of these nurdles. Most of these nurdles still are at sea. Uh, they would come ashore when, with strong winds, high tides, uh, with the monsoon waves and all that. So when it comes, our objective is to remove it. If we leave it there, it's going to go back up. And then it's going to be impacting the marine environment. So um, I think we have really uh, created that trend, the Nurdle Sri Lanka campaign trend. And so we are trying to also create awareness on microplastic. Mm -hmm. Sri Lanka is one of the, uh, this region, South Asian region, is one of the most polluted, most polluted when it comes to microplastic. And a lot of people don't know about this thing. Mm -hmm. And microplastic is one of the most detrimental uh, form of plastic because it can be mistaken by, like I said, by marine animals. They could consume Sweet it honey. and we could consume it. And so um, we need to be able to, uh, and nurdles are microplastic themselves. And we, are just, we just added a whole lot of nurdles into our sea. And so uh, we are taking this opportunity also to really deal with uh, the microplastic issue that not just Sri Lanka is facing, but the whole region. So um, we want to continue this and we want uh, everybody's support as mm -hmm. well. Um, yeah. Yeah, a, a very important standpoint, we have to go in for a short break and we'll just conclude all of this information and put it into a nutshell within our last segment. Uh, you're, on, you're watching JNXYZ, stay with us when we move into our last segment. Back to Gen XYZ. We are in our last segment and we are in conversation with Mudita Katwavala, the coordinator of the Pearl Protectors. Um, a very important initiative, Mudita. I think a lot of you have built a huge following behind it as well, which is why we invited you. We wanted to get your take and your sort of direction, your experiences to other organizations that have really come up because we need to motivate people just that they need to be motivated in some right, sustainable direction. And I think you did give that within our first few segments. Towards our last segment, what I really want to talk about is now the next few steps. Mm -hmm. Conservation, environmental issues, they will, they exist, they will continue to exist, and we need to be armed with education, we need to ar be armed with the right some form of, let's say, first aid that is required. Uh, something that is lacking amongst people, like a gender question that is asked, a per person wouldn't know how to, you know, basically react. Basically, why beach cleanups are required, because people don't know how to look after the environment. So. Based on your observations, the how can that activism grow? Now, it doesn't have to be someone coming up and say, okay, let me join Pearl Protectors. Mm. But rather, if they go somewhere and they see an issue happening, they can make the decision there to become an activist mm. and, and perform whatever is required, especially the youth, given that they are, might not be sullied by you know, what the social sort of norms. So, how can we expand it? How have you thought about expanding it? Because I see you on social media, I see you, like, you know, using these new tools, new resources, and going ahead, getting this message across. Mm. Is it working? What, what, are, what should be the next few steps? No, of course, that's a good, uh, good question. I think I want to answer that question uh, uh, really focusing on four areas. Uh, one, the first area is actually, if you are an individual who really wants to really, if you're passionate on a, one area, make sure that uh, you dedicate yourself. I think there'll be so many things uh, nowadays, there are so many things that could really deter you or really, you know, uh, you know, uh, lose focus. Exactly. You, uh, the attention goes away really fast. So what you need to do is dedicate yourself, be conscious about what you're doing. As an individual, you can really take your time off, weekends. Uh, not just you, bring in your fa uh, family, take in your, uh, like, you know, friends. Do something, uh, plan out something without just, you know, you could, of course, do a meetup, but that could be beneficial to the larger society. Uh, 
uh, which you could also be able to volunteer. Exactly. Now, I'm not just talking about doing a cleanup. So many areas you can really volunteer Even on. Even building awareness is something. Awareness. Uh, you know, uh, there are social issues that are, uh, that are um, right now, especially right now in Sri Lanka, that, that is taking place. So try to find what your first, first step is. Try to find where your spark, where your real passion is. Take it to the next step. Really take that spark to your friends, your family. Take that initiative. Once you take that first step, everything comes in really easy. The second area. As an organization, I think uh, if, you're, if you want to be a volunteer organization, uh, you should be able to not misuse volunteerism, but to promote volunteerism, incentivize volunteerism, motivate them, give them opportunities, uh, make sure that they, they stay involved, they, they stay focused, uh, they stay updated about what is going on in the country. Uh, see how you can find your own unique solutions. Right, so this is this is where uh, f uh, for an organization uh, there's potential. Exactly. Uh, don't think like, oh, uh, I have so many less followers. I have so many less people. Nobody knows about me. That's not true. Uh, even the pearl protectors, we started off uh, very small, but we kept uh, motivating ourselves based on the impact. Make sure you provide the correct motivation incentives for your volunteers, and you will see a whole lot of spark, a whole lot of passion uh, coming together to really support you. Um, I think that's, that's the second area. And the third area I want to really focus is on corporates. I think uh, for corporates right now, there's a lot of CSR initiatives going on. But I think it, they can go a little bit beyond it. Uh, they can go far beyond it, uh, definitely. We are, through this Nerdal Sri Lanka campaign also, we are trying to promote uh, corporations bringing in their staff to volunteer. This, this should be a thing where all corporates can really um, uh, you know, uh, uh, be engaged in. Exactly. Uh, giving a day out to volunteers, giving that uh, you know, incentive, promoting volunteerism within the staff really would bring in the team uh, bonding of any working place, really bring in the uh, responsibility that any person would have to the larger society. It's a good eye-opener to really increase the productivity of any place. The fourth and the final area is, I think I want to really uh, emphasize on the government's involvement. Because I think uh, a lot of other countries, like in Europe, Southeast Asia, even African countries, are promoting volunteerism. This is something that we are not seeing right now. I think definitely the government can really take the initiative to really promote, we are already number one in the world. Mm -hmm. right? We already have this urge to really uh, find solutions, contribute our time, contribute our efforts. Uh, but the thing is, when you have to do it, make sure that volunteers are incentivized. They learn out of it. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't be misused. And I, I must say that there, are, um, there has been initiatives before which really has uh, been where motiv volunteers have demotivated through certain activities. So uh, understand where, how an individual can develop through volunteerism and youth involvement and there could be miracles that could happen in Sri Lanka if these are to be done. Mm -hmm. And so I think, um, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. You, you just really touched on what I wanted to like give, uh, throw into you next also in terms of messaging, in terms of where you take your vision of volunteerism and how it's given out. Because something I caught on in what you said was volunteers, wherever, when they take up this role, they become ambassadors of a large initiative than themselves. So they represent that. And that should be something that people should be aware of, or like you, the youth should be aware of. When taking that decision, when making that decision, when you had to make that decision a few years ago, and when people have crisis today and that, and that decision should be taken by a lot more youth as of now. What was your thought process? What is the messaging you have to give to those kids, to the, to the youth that want to start their own organization, to maybe even go and clean the beach with their family? Why should they be doing this? What is that big reason that they are, they are, their requirement is required? Now, of course, I think Sri Lankans, <coughs> we, we, we are in an island which I mean, we have to protect. And so that is the pearl protects the pearl of the Indian Ocean. We exactly. really need to protect. And um, 
when I started this, I uh, my uh, main focus was at that time so many issues related to your ocean. We started hearing like you know the pollution, increased pollution, how we are ranked so much you know at a lower state in the world. We are talking about so many other issues, the geopolitics happening, and then there are so many other impacts on the marine environment. Had somebody had to do something, and so uh, when I started, it was. It was really small. It was just a few of uh, you know volunteers coming together and really understanding that passion. You know, um, if you if you just go with the trends, no, it's it's not something that's going to be uh, really working out. You really need to understand your passion, where you really want to find solutions. Focus on it. It's a cycle. It goes up. It goes down. Right when you're at the at the bottom. Right, you need to be able to inspire yourself. Uh, you need to be able to motivate yourself based on the impact you have provided to the larger society. Right, so um, that really helped me and our team to really uh, excel in the work we do. And so um, I think uh, everything we have done is really focusing, like I said, on that impact making sure that that positive impact is achieved at whatever level and being genuine about it mm -hmm. you know when whenever you do something don't think about oh what is what is it for me think about what is it for us sri lankans right so end of the day everything we do has will have a po uh, have an impact it could be negative it could be positive try to make it positive and it could bring wonders <laughs> A very good message, I think, to conclude our discussion. Thank you so much, Mujda Katwawala, the coordinator of Pearl Protectors. I hope you and your organization goes ahead, makes more strides forward. The country is watching, everyone is watching. And I think a huge following has also grown over the past few years to Pearl Protectors. So congratulations on all of that. Um, uh, again, thank you, Mujda, for joining us. I would uh, like to thank our viewers for joining us on this program of Gen XYZ, where we spoke about youth activism and how the youth contributes to protecting the environment and conserving it. We will talk about something again that is contemporary next week. Stay with us on Gen XYZ. I'm Dan Dutanavasam. Thank you for joining us today. Have a great night.